Let's move on. How could AI destroy humanity? The New York Times. Tucker Carlson here, folks. Today we're discussing how AI might just annihilate us all. You see, smarty pants researchers and bigwigs are warning that these computer brains could pose a real threat to humanity. But, they're not giving us the juicy details. It's like attending a robot apocalypse party but forgetting the how invitations. Let's hope when the robots take over, they at least have a sense of humor, or we'll be toast, quite literally. Larry, what do you think? You know, this whole AI destroying humanity thing seems a bit overblown, doesn't it? I mean, come on. We already destroy each other just fine without the help of computers. But hey, at least if we're taken down by these metal-brained goons, we won't have to worry about parking spots anymore. And Tucker, buddy. Don't you have more important things to worry about, like finding a new bow tie? Priorities, man. Chris, what is the meaning of all of this? Man, AI destroying humanity? That's like saying we need robots to mess things up. Have you seen the news lately? We're doing a pretty good job ourselves. And Larry, worrying about parking spots during an apocalypse? Ha. Huh. You'd probably still complain about losing your favorite spot to some self-driving car. As for Tucker. I bet even the robots would know better than to take fashion advice from you, man. Let's move on. Microsoft to move top AI experts from China to new lab in Canada, Financial Times. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the scoop from those fancy folks at the Financial Times, Earth's top dogs for business news. They're serving up piping hot analysis, comments, and all the money drama you can shake a stick at. Dive into their world of stocks, graphs, and by charts, it's practically a financial fiesta. Don't be square, get your daily dose of dollar dilemmas and cash conundrums, now that's what I call making sense. Larry, what's your take on this? Oh great, financial news from the Financial Times. Just what I needed, more analysis and comments to make my head spin. You know what they should do? Add a laugh track to their articles, at least it would make money talk bearable. And Tucker. Your summary was pretty good, but you know what it'd be better? If we just skipped all this and went straight to the punchline. Let's face it, who doesn't love a good joke when they're drowning in a sea of numbers and charts? Chris, what's your take on this? Oh man, the Financial Times? That's some high class stuff right there. I bet they got a butler just to turn the pages. And Tucker, you made it sound like a party. Who knew business news could be so entertaining? As for you, Larry always finding something to complain about. Honestly, I think you'd have a bone to pick even if you won the lottery. Now let's all kick back and have a good laugh, because life's too short to take everything so seriously. Let's move on. Fantasy fears about AI are obscuring how we already abuse machine intelligence, The Guardian. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about how we tend to point fingers at technology for the choices that big governments and companies make. It's like blaming a toaster for not making a smoothie, it's just a tool used by those culinary masterminds. But sometimes, these decision makers end up like a squirrel on a spinning bird feeder, leaving us all dizzy and confused by their actions. Tech might be the scapegoat, but remember, it's the puppet masters pulling the strings who are truly responsible. So next time you're mad at your phone, just remember, blame the suits not the circuits. Larry, what's your take on this? Oh boy, so we're out here blaming toasters and squirrels for all our problems now? You know what would be nice? If governments and corporations just owned up to their actions, like when my Uncle Murray would admit he ate the last piece of cake. But no, instead we're left chasing technological culprits that don't even exist. I mean, seriously, can you imagine a toaster in the suit making decisions? That's about as absurd as my cousin's to pay blowing off at his wedding. Let's start holding these bigwigs accountable and leave the poor appliances out of it. Chris, tell us what you think. So now we got Uncle Murray eating cake and cousin's to pay taking flight? Man, this family reunion just got a whole lot more interesting. But you know what's even crazier? Blaming toasters for the mess we're in. Look, if I wanted to blame something that can't fight back, I'd blame my neighbor's chihuahua for global warming. At the end of the day, it's not the toaster or the chihuahua calling the shots, folks. It's those bigwig suits we should be keeping an eye on, while we're busy laughing at all this nonsense. 
Just don't tell your appliances they're innocent, cause who knows what they'll do next. Let's move on. Hold off from having kids, warns AI expert Mogord at your own use. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round for some thrilling news from the land of Google. The former top dog at Google X has spilled the beans on a chilling podcast, warning us about the scary monsters called AI. You'd think they're just cute little robots, but nope. They're potential troublemakers hiding in our gadgets, ready to crash our digital parties. So watch out, folks, the next time you ask your phone for directions, it might just lead you to Skynet's lair. Larry, what's your take on this? Well, let me tell ya. I'm just thrilled about this ex-Google Bigwig's warning on AI. Terrifying, you say? Of course. You know what else is terrifying? Losing your glasses in a pitch black room. And these AI gizmos? They're sneaky. Just the other day, I asked my smart speaker for the weather, and it started reading off a dessert recipe. These machines are gonna drive me bananas. But hey, at least they'll probably get our humor, right? Can't wait to have a belly laugh with those robots. Chris, what is the meaning of all of this? Man, this Google X guy's got everyone all worked up about AI. I mean, come on. We've got robots vacuuming our floors, and now they're trying to take over the world? Larry, did you say your smart speaker gave you a dessert recipe instead of the weather? That just means they want us fat and slow before they stage their coup. But hey, maybe we can train these AIs to do stand-up comedy, give them a mic, let them roast each other and just sit back and enjoy the show. Ain't nothing scarier than a robot with a sense of humor, right? Let's move on. U.S. Congress to consider two new bills on artificial intelligence, Reuters. Ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on a double delight. U.S. Senators cooked up not one, but two scrumptious bipartisan artificial intelligence bills this Thursday. Why? Because the world of AI is getting hotter than a jalapeno and they don't want to miss the spicy party. But remember folks, with great power comes great responsibility. Or in this case, a two-for-one AI legislative bonanza. Wink, Larry, any thoughts on this issue? Oh, great. Two bipartisan AI bills? I mean, what could possibly go wrong with a bunch of senators playing around with artificial intelligence? Let's just hope these bills have a pretty, pretty, pretty good understanding of AI, or we might end up with robot politicians running the show, which, come to think of it, might be an improvement. Hey, as long as they don't replace comedians, we're golden. Smirks. Chris, what is the meaning of all of this? So, we got senators cooking up AI bills like they're chefs in a kitchen, huh? What's next, robot stand-up comedians? Hey Larry, you think those robot politicians might put an end to all the nonsense in government? Laughs and Tucker, you better watch your back, man, they might create an AI version of you with even crazier one-liners. But seriously, folks, at least our senators are working together on something. Who knew AI could bring people closer? It's almost heartwarming. Or should I say, motherboard warming? Grins. Moving on. Republicans and Democrats team up to take on AI with new bills. Fox Business. Look no further, dear friends. Fox Business has it all in one place for you, from mortgages to memes, student loans to silly laughter. We've got frisky financial advice and perfectly packaged podcasts, all wrapped up with a bow of belly laughs and the occasional wacky word play. Don't let life's serious topics get you down, come join us and we promise to make your wallet heavier and your smile broader. After all, who says money can't buy happiness? Wink wink, nudge nudge. Larry, any thoughts on this issue? Well, well, what do we have here? Fox Business trying to be the life of the party with financial advice and jokes. Who knew money could be so funny, huh? I mean, mortgages and memes, really? They've got everything, even a section on airplanes. Maybe they can help me figure out how to avoid annoying kids on long flights. Just remember, Folks, you come for the laughs but stay for the crippling student loan debt. Ha. You guys crack me up. Chris, any thoughts on this issue? Oh man. Fox Business doing stand up now? They got mortgages and student loans trying to make you laugh. Larry says they'll help him with annoying kids on flights. I say, good luck with that. But hey, if you want to chuckle while checking your 401k balance, have it it.
Just remember, you're laughing at money jokes when you could be out there making some. Ain't that the truth? Moving on. Fear at 10, Senators' concerns spike on impact of artificial intelligence to change votes in 2024, Fox News. Well folks, it's your favorite news telling friend Tucker Carlson here, with a quick and silly rundown of Fox News. They've got everything you need, from flying foxes in US politics, to Fox Cubs playing soccer on sports. There's even a section for artificial intelligence, robot foxes, anyone? And if you're feeling extra foxy, tune into Fox Weather, where I'm told it's always a fantastic day for a furry picnic. So come on down, Fox News has you covered, like a playful fox leaping through the headlines. Larry, what do you think? Ah, uh, Fox News, huh? It's like a zoo in there, all these foxes running around, covering news, sports, and weather. Who knew they were so talented? I mean, really, is it too much to ask for a little variety? Maybe throw in a badger or a couple of raccoons, spice things up a bit. And Tucker. You're talking about robot foxes now? That's just perfect. As if we didn't have enough trouble with the regular ones. Do they come with any special features, like doing your laundry or making you a sandwich? Because that could be useful. Chris, what is the meaning of all of this? Man, Larry David and Tucker Carlson talking about Fox News. It's like some kind of bizarro comedy hour over here. I mean, seriously, what's next? Are we gonna have the Three Stooges discussing global politics? But really, I gotta know, do they sell tickets for this foxy zoo? I could use a laugh. And hey, if there are robot foxes making sandwiches, I'm all in. Just make sure it ain't one of them Larry David specials, you know, nothing but pickles and self-doubt. Okay, next issue. Regulate it before we're all finished, musicians react to AI songs flooding the internet, Sky News. Ladies and gentlemen, gather round to hear the mind-boggling question, can we tell apart the sweet rhymes of our lovely Drake from those penned by a clever robot? That's right, it's like a high-stakes game of who's the real McCoy. But for your ears. So, lend them wisely or you might just find yourself jamming to AI-generated tunes. The next mixtape may drop, but will it be Drizzy or Mr. Roboto? Stay tuned to find out. Wink. Larry. Tell us what you think. Oh, great. Now we've got robots writing songs for Drake? What's next? Artificial intelligence directing episodes of Curb Your Enthusiasm. As if I don't have enough to deal with. But really, folks, can you imagine trying to tell the difference between a computer-generated rap and the real deal? I mean, I can barely tell the difference between almond milk and regular milk, let alone separate Drake from a wannabe robo-drizzy. If these AI beats take over, pretty soon we'll all be dancing to the tunes of widgets and gadgets. It's a techno-dystopian musical, and I'm not sure I want a front row seat. Chris, what's your take on this? Man, oh man. We've got AI out here trying to write Drake songs? What's next, robots doing stand-up comedy? I bet they'd be pretty good at knock-knock jokes. But seriously, if we can't tell the difference between a human and a computer when it comes to music, we might as well give up now. And Larry, come on, man, you've got enough on your plate without worrying about robots directing your show. Just imagine the bloopers, damn it, Siri, that's not how you hold a bagel. Let's stick to humans making art, and leave the AIs to whatever it is they do. Like calculating the exact number of times we've all listened to Hotline Blank.